Raise your hand if you ever had a fear of something. Let me see. As you can see, some people are even afraid to raise their hands. <laughs> we all fear one thing or the other. Sometimes we have the same fear for different things. Some people are afraid of spiders. Some people are afraid of... I can see one lady over there, she really wants to scream now. I can completely relate to that. Because my daughter, my daughter, if she sees a cockroach at night, she will go, ah! and she will wake up the entire neighborhood. So I can relate to that. And some people are afraid of snakes, dark rooms, and Draculas. I remember when I was 18 years old, my father enrolled me for a swimming class. And there were 30 men in that class, and I was the youngest person in that class. And the swimming pool was Olympic sized. And the instructor was a swimming champion. For the first two days, we spent time in, at the shallow end of the pool doing some exercises. On the third day, the instructor jumped at the deep end and he started floating and looked at us and say, one by one, jump. All of a sudden, I became a nice gentleman. I looked at the others and said, after you. <laughs> after you, sir. So one by one, everybody jumped and they started clinging to the sides of the pool. Then eventually, I was the only person standing. And everyone looked at me and said, Manoj, jump. And I looked at the pool and the pool started to move. And the pool started looking at me. And I thought I, maybe I should run and then jump in one step. I ran to the edge of the pool and I froze. I can't jump, I won't jump, and I didn't jump. I wondered why. It took me years to find out an answer. You see, sometimes your fear are not about life-threatening situations. Sometimes our fears are less traumatic and more problematic. Something that stops you from living your truest potential. For example, some people have a fear of rejection. Because of that, you will not ask for help. You will not ask for a pay raise or you will not ask for a date. Some people have fear of people in authority. Some people have fear of meeting new people, talking to people, looking at people in the eye, networking. And some people even have paladophobia, which is of course the fear of bald people. <laughs> now let me show you a scary picture, boom. Now, if you can stand me and not afraid of me, today I'm going to share with you a definite process, a three-step process that you can use to break your fears. And if you follow this process, I have no doubt that you can break through from fear to freedom. You see, the first question is, are you born with your fears? Are you born with your fears? The answer is yes and no. Based on research and studies, it turns out you're only born with two fears. One is the fear of falling, and the other is the fear of loud noises. So what about the rest of the fears? Where do you get it from? We learn our fears. And who do we learn it from? From people we trust, parents, teachers, caretakers, and siblings who tells us scary stories about places and things. <laughs> Don't accept food from strangers. Have you heard that before? And now every stranger is a suspect. <laughs> then of course there is God. If you do not follow his instructions, you will end up in hell. And hell turns out to be a dark place in the basement with a lot of sadists hanging around. <laughs> So you should better watch out. And that is a bad news. 
The worst news is God is also stalking you all the time. <laughs> he sees you when you're sleeping. He sees you when you're changing. Yeah. <laughs> and he also can, he can also hear what you're thinking. So, sir, no dirty thinking tonight. <laughs> so, you see, you start to become self-conscious. You start to be even be afraid of your own shadow eventually if you're not watchful. Then, of course, we all have our own fair share of negative experiences, several negative experiences, which shapes our fear about places and things. So in short, we learn our fears. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. Our fears have helped us from survive from predators and natural disasters. It's, it serves a purpose. But the question is, can we unlearn our fears? If we can learn our fears, we can also unlearn it, fortunately. So let's start with the biggest fear of all. What's the biggest fear of all? Sorry? It turns out, based on research and study, the number one fear in the world is the fear of public speaking. <laughs> so people are rather willing to die than speak. Now, the question is, why, without going into details, why that is the fear of public? A lot of research has shown that is the fear of the public. And let's start with that. And this is, I'm entering familiar territory because I used to be afraid of speaking. I am also the world champion of public speaking. Which that means is as a world champion, as a professional speaker, as an international author, and as a coach, I get to travel the world like speaking and coaching. So I meet different people. I notice that fear of public speaking is very pervasive. In fact, I met a guy who said, Manoj, when I get a chance to present in front of senior leaders, I prepare very well. I know my subject. I go prepared. But when I stand in front of them, my mind goes blank. And I even forget my name. <laughs> True story. I was also looking for a story closer to home in Singapore. There was a guy who came to me for coaching to overcome his fear of public speaking. And now he was so afraid to speak that he will not speak to anyone outside his immediate circle of family and friends. And if you ask him to stand in front of 10 people, he can't even say his name. Today he can stand in front of 5,000 people and speak. And every time he speaks, he gets standing ovation and standing invitation. Of course, I'm talking about, and some of his videos are, uh, I have more than 2 million views on online. Sridesh Ramchandani, his name, you can look him up, is uh, better than normal. And if you look at him, every time he speaks, he, gets, he can engage the audience. And also, you look at his schedule, he's sometimes more busier than me. <laughs> that leads me to the number one point in overcoming your fear of public speaking, expectancy. You see, Hidesh, to, for example, even though he had this morbid fear of public speaking, he always believed he wanted to be and he can become an international speaker. So he chose to believe the unbelievable even when there was no evidence. So to overcome a fear of public speaking, you need to have an expectancy, expectation that things are going to go fine. To ability to believe in the unbelievable. A research by a famous American psychologist Julian Rotter, he says, our decision to do something is based on two things. One, our expectation of the outcome. Number two, the value we associate for that outcome. Which means our expectations drive our behaviors. Remember, when I was in the swimming pool, I also had an expectancy. I expected to drown. And that's why I can't jump. When I was nine years old, my neighbor's dog chased me. And on that day, I became the fastest runner on earth. <laughs> and I stopped trusting dogs. Now, the thing is, not all dogs are going to chase you. So here's the thing. Expect the best even when you fear the worst. Expect the best even when you fear the worst. So I, when I look at people, I also see two groups of people. When I ask them to face their fear, 
what they do is one group get immobilized by what's going to go wrong. The other group start to expect that things are going to go well. At least they see possibilities in the better outcome. So that's all about expectancy. Number two, I'd like to do a 15 second activity which means when I say start, what you need to do is find someone in the, sitting next to you or behind you. I want you to look them right in the eye without looking away for 15 seconds. You got that? Yes. You got that? Yes. All right. Ready? One, two, three, start. Now, now because of this exercise, if you fall in love, <laughs> you can name your child after me. All right, your time is up. <laughs> so the second point is, what's the second point? Exposure. You see, the more you see, the less you fear. And the less you fear, the more you do. And it's a cycle. The more you see, the less you fear, the less you fear, the more you do. My daughter, when she was a toddler, for some strange reason, she started to be afraid of me. Whenever she sees me, she started crying and screaming as if she saw a cockroach. <laughs> I, after I spent some time with her, we became familiar, friendly, and she also made peace with the cockroach. My organization's name is Thought Expressions. We help people to overcome their fear of public speaking and speak at a professional level. So as part of that, we do something called a public speaking masterclass around the world. So I have a habit, whenever I do professional speaking or when I do this public speaking masterclass, I, I pick somebody from the audience and ask them to come over here and speak. Don't worry, today I'm not going to ask you to do that. <laughs> but I normally do that. And my objective is to coach them and to help them overcome their fear and experience that process. And of course, I do this in different cities. This particular one was interesting. One lady who was sitting re really at the back, she volunteered, but she didn't have the courage to come to the friend. So she asked her friend and said, can you also come with me? And two of them came. I said, you're only supposed to come one. I said, why are you here? No, I, I'm coming with her. I said, since you're here, you will also speak. And she started shivering, right? <laughs> what you will find is once you find your voice, you will have the courage to go beyond your comfort zone. This was an auditorium in Poland. And I got a girl to come, lady to come up on stage and coached her and she started speaking. But then she did something surprising. She took off the mic and left it on the table and said, I don't need a mic. And she started speaking, projecting her voice into that big auditorium. That's what, when you find your voice, you can go beyond your comfort zone. This photo was in Barcelona. It looks like a Me Too moment, but it's not. Don't worry. It looks like I'm dragging her. So this lady volunteered, and I had to bring her to the stage. And if he, as you notice, she doesn't make eye contact with anyone. She refuses to look at the audience. And of course, after I coached her, I also asked the audience, you can ask her anything she will say. And she started answering questions. She engaging, and she also got a standing ovation. So I asked her after the experience, so how was your experience, Manuela? And she said, oh, thank you for changing me, but when you dragged me on stage, I freaked out. And after I spoke, the audience freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to do it again. That's the point. The more you see, the less you fear, and the less you fear, the more you want to do. That takes me to the complete model one is expectancy. Expect the best even when you fear the worst. The second being exposure. Same thing. The more you see, the less you fear. Number three is that believe you don't have to do this alone. You can always ask for help. You can always ask for help. Get into a support group. Ask someone who has expertise in overcoming that particular fear that you have. And get on what I call, and what this I call, the freedom loop, the free, fear to freedom loop. So uh, my challenge to you is to pick a fear that you want to overcome 
and get on the freedom loop and take the action that helps you to overcome that fear. But before I close, I want to talk about the fear of the other. You see, when you see someone new, especially when that person is from a different custom or culture or wearing a different costume or from a different race or religion or different preferences. And I say this because I got the opportunity to meet people from more than 142 different countries. I have coached people from more than 30 different nationalities face to face. I, I always believe that in every group, there are good people and bad people. Don't make a negative experience, experience you have with one person and project it to the rest of the group. And the whole point is being human. Try to understand the other person. Again, the same thing. Exposure, expectance, expectancy, exposure, and experience, the freedom loop. So that's it. So I invite you to identify your fears, the one you want to overcome that can help you in your personal life and your professional life. Ask for help, get on a support group, and break through from fear to freedom.